All right, welcome back, everybody. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Vamos. Hello. Hello. We need. I wonder if we should. I've often thought now, since we're like getting a little bit larger of an audience, just a little bit, if we should have like an intro. But I still am like cool with no intro. We probably should. So that way I don't have to be referred to as your lady friend. <laughs> but at the same time, we're like Kanye's album. Like, just starts <laughs> and finishes. <laughs> and everybody listening like, is it. like, I don't think that's what I'd compare you to. No, but. Yeah, well, anyway. Yeah, I don't. But those cheesy intros are stupid. And if you're a new listener and you wonder why, it's, it's just because I don't. I don't like those. Th it's just weird. It I guess have like to be cheesy. We could do like a cool one. Like, yeah, but they, hey guys, know. welcome to our podcast. This is who we are. So you're not completely confused. Whatever. Maybe it's. I don't know. Anyway, we have a topic. Before everybody turns it off and just skips ahead, and let's talk it's not about political. Calm down, everyone. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> Taking the Lord's name in vain. Mm, great topic. Great Very topic. important topic. It is. Serious topic. And uh, this actually uh, comes from more so of a question that I that we had from somebody mm -hmm. who didn't realize something right off of the bat, um, but later came to understand completely. But it's one thing that I was like, you know what, though, that is an amazing topic and we need to talk about that. What does that mean? What does taking the Lord's name in vain mean? Because we automatically attach it to either a curse word or just using it, you know, just in everyday speech, you know, just throwing it around like nothing, which it does mean that it's like one of those one of those things where, yeah, it does if you dissect, but that wasn't the larger point that they're trying to get that that that's trying to get across. Like it goes a lot deeper than that. I have here the write up that Got Questions did on taking the Lord's name in vain, and like they usually do with these issues, they really do a really good job of simplifying you know these things so they they've got a lot of different writers that they have over there and all of them are really really solid i don't agree with them like on a lot of things but it my opinion doesn't matter but i do think that's important to say though because we do recommend them a lot but mm -hmm. then there's still a lot of things that i like doesn't mean you have to agree with everything i like violently disagree with them on on a few things mm -hmm. um but they're a great resource so Anyway, they have their write-up, what does it mean to take the Lord's name in vain? Their answer. Although many people believe taking the Lord's name in vain refers to using the Lord's name as a swear word, there is much more involved with the vain use of God's name. To understand the severity of taking the Lord's name in vain, we must first see the Lord's name from his perspective as outlined in Scripture. The God of Israel was known by many names and titles, but the concept embodied in God's name plays an important and unique role in the Bible. God's nature and attributes, the totality of his being, and especially his glory, are reflected in his name. They reference Psalm 8.1 for that. And then Psalm 111.9 tells us, his name is holy and awesome and the lord's prayer begins by addressing god with the phrase hallowed be your name in matthew 6 9 an indication that a reverence for god and his name should be foremost in our prayers too often we barge into god's presence with presumptuous to-do list for him yeah. without being mindful of his holiness his awesomeness and the vast chasm that separates our nature our nature from his that we are even allowed to come before his throne is due only to his gracious, merciful love for his own. We must never take that grace for granted. 
Because of the greatness of the name of God, any use of God's name that brings dishonor on him or on his character is taking his name in vain. Note that, because that's what we're going to really talk about later. The third of the Ten Commandments forbids taking or using the Lord's name in an irreverent manner, because that would indicate a lack of, lack of respect for God himself. A person who misuses God's name will not be held guiltless by the Lord. They reference Exodus 27. In the Old Testament, bringing dishonor on God's name was done by failing to perform an oath or vow taken in his name, as in Leviticus 19.12. The man who used God's name to legitimize his oath and then broke his promise would indicate his lack of reverence for God as well as a lack of fear for his holy retribution. It was essentially the same as denying God's existence. For believers, however, there is no need to use God's name to legitimize an oath as we, as we are not to take oaths in the first place. Let our yeses be yes and our no be no. Matthew 5.33-37 There is a larger sense in which people today take the Lord's name in vain. Those who name the name of Christ, who pray in his name, and who take his name as part of their identity but who deliberately and continually disobey his commands, are taking his name in vain. Jesus Christ has been given the name above all names, at which every knee shall bow. Philippians 2, 9 and 10. And when we take the name Christian, this is super important, I love this, how they put this, upon ourselves, we must do so with an understanding of all that signifies. If we profess to be Christians, but act, think, and speak in a worldly or profane manner, we take his name in vain. When we misrepresent Christ, either intentionally or through ignorance of the Christian faith as proclaimed in Scripture, we take the Lord's name in vain. When we say we love him, but do not do what he commands, as in Luke 6.46, we take his name in vain and are possibly identifying ourselves to be among those to whom Christ will say, hmm. I never knew you. Away from me in the day of judgment. Matthew seven twenty one through 23. The name of the Lord is holy as he is holy. The name of the Lord is a representation of his glory, his majesty, and his supreme deity. We are to esteem and honor his name as we revere and glorify God himself. To do any less is to take his name in vain. So, I i mean, they just blew that out of the water. I thought with that, like, I don't really even need to comment much on it. But I don't want to just sit here and just read an article because there's the larger point of this is that, yes, there's we attach it to a curse word. But what we don't attach it to is our lifestyle. And it's about how we honor ourselves and conduct ourselves as Christians. And there is a, ma a majority of the world will claim Christ, but their fruit, their spiritual fruit in their lives do not show proof of Christ in their lives. And that but is taking... But we never would think to look at that and be like, you're taking the Lord's name in vain. We would never think that. When you're denying and living in sin... When you're saying and, and calling upon the name of Christ, yet sitting at the table of demons as well, you're taking the Lord's name in vain. You're guilty of multiple, <laughs> multiple things there. And like the article says, it risk you run the risk of Christ telling you in Luke 6, 46, away, I never knew you. Like, that's really, really something that we have to think about. Because, yeah, we throw it around, especially in our culture. And all the time, I mean, it's always OMG. And that can, that can mean, oh my gosh, I'm not. But we just, and it, so it's not like we need to be, I, I don't think we need to go around like that. But, yeah, it bothers me when somebody that clearly doesn't know God uses his name, especially, especially Jesus' name. That's well, and that's like God the, is well too. I mean, it's the same um, 
you know, it's, it's the same out feeling. The GDs yeah, and the, and the GDs and the JCs, when get, or that's when. Well, and that's, I love the point of you know who the real God is, because when was the last time someone took Buddha's name in vain or Krishna's name in vain, right? right. Like that's, everybody goes for, right. sl- you know, just we use the word Jesus and God just like any other. Or, well, we throw saying. around the name of Christ consistently. Oh, always. Yeah. That's what you, I mean, you see people do that. Oh, all the TV, time. It's in it, everything. It's and everywhere. I mean, yeah, it, it hits every single time somebody says it. It's like, oh, you shouldn't say that. Like, you why would you? Want you? And then especially when you see filthy people do it. Mm-hmm. And you're like, yeah, you, you know, you pray for those people. Um, but I do understand it. There's another uh, aspect to this, though, that I actually wanted to to bring out, though, is we as Christians can be so turned off by the world's use, the way that the world uses it and throws it around Mm -hmm. that we ourselves don't know how to use it. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of what the misunderstanding was, is I use not often, only in certain situations and I'm sure I've done it on this podcast. Well, and the situation times. was during, well, f- the point that you're going to make, it was an appropriate time, but it caused you to do so multiple times because of the nature of what we were discussing with going right, through right. prayer requests. Exactly. And I said it like three times, mm-hmm. but, and, but it was, and, and that's what I was saying. It's like, there's, there's a nature to it where we as believers and we as spiritually mature believers, um, understand the differences of throwing out God's name in vain and and, and we don't do it. And that was one thing that really hit for me personally. And this is why I even talk about that is because I was, I mean, I was one of those people that threw it around without, and I, I tried not to because I I always had that sense of like, it, it didn't feel right. But if we're just being honest, I totally was one of those people that did use it yeah. completely loosely. So, and that was one thing that I immediately, immediately came to understanding in, and I was very, very changed at at that moment when I came to understanding um, what his name means and is and the holiness of it. So that changed everything. And, but also I learned how to use it through scripture and how to, you know, there's a, there's a time for us as Christians where we can cry out my God, or we can answer somebody, my God, without saying, without thinking that somebody's using it in a loose manner. Somebody can actually be using it in a real manner. A scriptural manner when right, we cry out, manner. my God. When we cry out to our God. Mm-hmm. I mean, we are crying out to our God, my God, my God. And we need to have that boldness and that understanding and that type, right type of relationship with God to be able to, to speak to our God in this way and in a sense of prayer. Um, and that's where we were. I mean, it was, a, it was, in, a, it was in a prayer gathering and if you didn't know but yeah it seems like okay this seems like it's in a loose manner but then even like this person saw immediately they're like i never thought to think that you could actually be using it literally in a literal loving manner because you said oh my god yeah and and the and, and that this was, was a, a reaction to which rightfully so but that was, was a reaction horrible going, news how on earth could a man like you be standing right, up say, and oh saying my oh yeah. my god and using the lord's right. name in vain like that But like my thought process is immediately like god deal with that like please like that's something like hey ne- like hey this needs to you know, like one of those things, like I'm, I'm coming to you in all humility and mm-hmm. all, um, realizing that I'm nothing but a worm <laughs> yeah. and realizing that I can't do anything without you and need you to take hold of this situation and, and applying God, my, you know, saying my God to that situation. Um, so there is, um, 
and, and you know, obviously I don't think there's, we, we, we have to be very careful what that line is. And that even may, some people may not understand that. And we, and I am completely understanding of that. And that's why there's no, I'm not saying anything against this, this person felt horrible. And I feel horrible that this person felt horrible. No, because, I'd much rather you have, if you have a question, much rather come have question. and be like, Hey, what the heck? How on and, earth could you do that? Yeah. And no. And she realized you know, she's like, I didn't even, I didn't even stop to think that this could be in a literal manner. Yeah. And but isn't that crazy? Yeah, now it makes so, sense. And that so kind of changes the whole, the whole scope of it. Yeah. But we as Christians and especially in our society, because I've even seen, you know, preachers do it, you know, where it's, uh, it's a little bit more loose than it is serious. So it's not something that we do want to throw around. Like we just read in this whole article, it's it's not the name of God is not something that we need to throw around. We don't, we don't, it's amazing how in 2000 years, I think this, this is definitely the furthest that our human recorded, you know, our human history has ever drifted away from God and the understanding of who he is mm -hmm. because there always used to be at least one culture and one, you know, that knew the God of Abraham and knew that he meant business and he will like destroy you in, an, in a heartbeat. But we have no fear whatsoever of God anymore. Yeah. I don't even think we know what the fear of God is. Because we have salvation in Christ, we've decided that we don't need to have any fear of God because we're because we we have salvation and that couldn't be any further from the truth. We don't understand who God is. We don't understand the holiness of God. We don't understand what that means to us. We don't we don't understand what that means that we are not you know, we are waiting for our adoption as sons. We are sealed and have a guarantee, but we're not there yet. And we are still just a worm. And, you know, all, all these different things. We don't understand this. But it plays into how you would use his name like that. Like, I mean... People knew not to not to do that. <laughs> you would be destroyed in a heartbeat. And we as a culture today just throw it around like nothing. And that's all the more frightening for the coming judgment. Absolutely. Because we've drifted so far up from fear and we've been able to use this loosely. We've been able to mock it. God will not be mocked. And one of the one of the most terrifying verses in Psalms that he who sits in the heavens laughs. Yeah. Like that's terrifying. So, you know, yeah, there's we do misuse it a lot. But Our for whole a culture, it's everywhere, yeah. For a believer who you know, is is becoming stronger in the Lord. I encourage you to call out his name and to, and to cry out his name. As we are. As we are to. supposed to. That is not using it in a vain manner. You're using it how you're supposed to. Realize how you use it and apply it. It's important to think about it. So that's why we even did this podcast because you don't think about even using the name of God, like that's that's something that you should stop. We don't think about saying words usually, right? They just slip, yep. or you just say them. Yep. No, this is something that we should think about. We should say, okay, if I'm ever using the name of Christ, if I'm ever using God, if I'm ever using any any reference that we have, any Hebrew form, I don't care, Elohim, Adonai, it doesn't matter. Any of those. Am I using this in a in an honoring manner, lifting up or crying out? Mm -hmm. Or am I saying this and bringing this into just a worldly sense? 
But on the broader spectrum, remember, this is using the name of the Lord in vain is more relevant to your lifestyle and how you show yourself to the rest of the world versus you actually throwing this this loose this loose word around because this is actual action by you a confessing believer so if you're looking and acting just like the world you run that luke risk that luke 646 risk so i think that's all we had on did you have anything to add to that on using his name in vain lady friend <laughs> <laughs> I am his wife, by the way. Yeah, this is um, Heidi. She's my wife. Me. Hello. Um, yeah, no, I think you really covered it all, but I think that's amazing when you look. Um, I know we had talked about it, but when you look, I understand the reason why most people assume that you're using it sure. in a blasphemous way because that's what we're used to seeing in our culture. But I think that study of going through Scripture and looking at the times that my God is used yeah. um i think that's a very i'm trying to think of the right word but i think that's a really interesting study to do to search you know go to any any bible resource and just type in my god and go through the mm -hmm. times that my god is cried out right. by whoever it is in the situation to see that because i don't think we really have any good examples in our world so when you hear somebody say oh my god you just assume they're saying it in a very disrespectful light because all the ways that we see god's name being is called out is in a disrespectful light but um to see that and be like oh wow you meant that literally you said oh my god in a way of literal application of literally crying out and saying my god my god mm -hmm in whatever the situation is. So I think, um, yeah, it's, we should not be using his calling out his name and using it improperly in any way, shape or form crudeness and, and anything that's just a joke or whatever it may be is very, very clear in scripture that it has no place in a true believer's life whatsoever. Um, your life and your actions are most definitely how you can be taking the names or the Lord's name in vain. You may have the, the best vocabulary and say all the right things, but you're living a life that shows no spiritual fruit. So therefore, you are taking the Lord's name in vain. I don't think we realize that. And then, like you said, looking, go search scripturally and see how his name is supposed to be used. And I think that's when and you get that big a, moment of like, oh, Another way wow. of doing it, too. If that's you're amazing. calling yourself a Christian, the other way that we can express ourselves that we don't give enough credit to is our social media. Mm -hmm. And I guess the last thing that I want to end, I guess that I'll end on is uh, we as Christians, you have to be careful what you're posting on social media, Absolutely. what you're saying and how mm -hmm. you're acting and how your image is appearing to others. Because you could be taking the Lord's name in vain on social media. Absolutely. You people know that you identify as a Christian. You post Christian things sometimes, but then you post these other things, you know, that that don't look so Christian. You have to be careful. Well, and it's one of those things I know you brought it before, and it's like, imagine, not saying that this is biblical and we have scripture to point you to, but imagine if when you show up to heaven, God sits you down, pulls out his laptop, and scrolls through your social media And you media have to posts. go through these, yeah. Right? Like, How are you going to feel? Well, but it was funny. Is it really funny? Is when you're it? standing before the holy God, the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything within them, is it still as funny? Yeah, because totally don't think that you won't have to answer for every little... Right, like I'm not saying like <laughs> the whole computer thing is like God's literally going to... But you know what I mean? But do would you sit there... Is that language funny now? Are those jokes really right. funny? Is that really okay? Should you really be that invested in whatever it is that you're posting about continuously? So we need to, we need to be careful with that. Because the whole world is on you. And how many of you have unbelievers that are on your, on your social media? Yeah. How many unbelievers do you have? I, I know everybody has lots. Yeah, you have to. So what are you doing? That's shining the light of Christ. Are you being like the unbelievers? Yeah. 
Or living set apart. Or you're living set apart. Kind of filters out your social media pretty quick. But. I know our social media feeds look like day and night difference than they used to. Mm-hmm. If you did, oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, they they, should. they weed themselves out. But anyway, just some thoughts to keep in mind. And definitely wanted to hit on this topic, but we definitely... Uh, thank you for the people that have shared concern and always and that was kind of the point where i said when she was like oh gosh and i was like no i would much rather you come and be like hey what the heck was this about well here's what it's about oh i didn't think of it that way that's cool continue on right that's why you always go if you and feel I'm like sure someone has offended you you go to and them I'm and say hey i'm almost positive that i've done it so many times in so many podcasts mm -hmm. but i guarantee 100 percent i have not ever done it in a, a vain manner it may have been my reaction to something that some tragedy or something i think i don't I don't know. I know. But, um, yeah, never, never in a vain manner. But then take a look at it in a broader, you know, in a broader sense. So I think that's it. That's it. That's it. Have a good day.